Okay, welcome back. It's now five past eight on the dot. And yes, welcome back to Salah Media. And this is Friday Night Live with me, <laughs> SD. Uh, welcome back, man. It's great to obviously have you all with us. Time now for the Tech Talk. And uh, we obviously welcome our viewers and our listeners out on various platforms on YouTube, on Facebook Live, on the TuneIn app, on the Salah Media app, on the uh, streaming platforms, as well as those out in KZN via the airwaves of Radio Al Ansar on 90.4 FM and 106.4 FM, respectively, or 105.6 FM, rather, uh, out in the KZN part of the country. Right. So tonight we're talking in the Tech Talk segment regarding Netflix, and South African Netflix viewers have to now pay TV license fees. And um, the SABC, the South African Broadcasting Corporation, has proposed the regulation be implemented to expand the definition of a TV license to include services such as the streaming uh, platform Netflix. And uh, in a presentation to Parliament's Portfolio Committee on uh, Communications presented by Deputy Communication Minister Pinky Kekana, the public broadcaster has argued that the expanded definition of a TV license is outdated and needs to be adjusted to current realities. And it uh, looks like they're wanting to live with the times now, obviously, of the streaming services and the platforms. Now, the SABC said that regulation is needed, which would require pay TV service providers like multi-choice and video-on-demand uh, providers like Netflix um, to collect TV licenses uh, on behalf of the SABC. And uh, on the line to talk to us now a bit more regarding this and this whole topic, I welcome uh, Jan Formalen, who is a senior journalist at my broadband. Uh, good evening, Jan. Thanks for taking the time. Great to have you with us. Uh, it's always again. a pleasure. Thank you. Um, so, okay, I'm sure you're obviously a Netflix subscriber. Um, now, many people, and I want interaction from the viewers and your reactions, as well as my team at the back there. Sarailo, I did speak to you before this. Um, are you a Netflix subscriber? And I want your comments. Okay, you can comment below on the platform, or you can send through WhatsApp on 0617660355. This proposed regulation, Jan, from uh, the public broadcaster, um, uh, obviously ushered in by Deputy Communication Minister uh, Pinky Kikana. Do you think now, that the SABC is looking for alternatives to, you know, obviously generate revenue. Obviously, back in the day, I remember growing up where, you know, you'd have somebody knock on the door. Hey, listen, I'm here from the SABC regarding your TV license. You need to pay X amount. Coming to the 2000s generation, you'd have an email or an SMS system. Post 2010, I don't think many people are paying TV licenses. So, is this where we are? I mean, have the SABC sat down in a war room and said, okay, fine, we need to tackle DSTV, pay content service companies like this. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so the SABC is uh, struggling, uh, I expect, with TV license uh, payments. In, in fact, um, we've reported on this in the past. The uh, amount of delinquent payments uh, at the SABC regarding TV licenses is is uh, a, a problem for them. And uh, the fact is that the, the, their TV license revenue uh, is just far lower than, than they needed to be and that they expect it to be. And the reason for it is quite simple. Uh, South Africans just do not feel like they're getting value from the service. And uh, it's, it's part of a growing... Uh, I want to. I, I hesitate to call it a tax revolt, but it's certainly civil disobedience uh, from South Africans on the same order of the eToll system, where South Africans have just drawn a line in the sand and said, "I will not pay any further." Um, is the one uh, side of it, and the other side of it is like, "I will not pay to support uh, corrupt or mm. uh, it, it doesn't even need to be." A, a genuinely corrupt government uh, institution. It just needs to smell like corruption, right? And mm -hmm. that's what happened with eTolls and the whole cop situation and the fact that, you know, all, all these stories came out about yeah. how this much money is leaving the country um, and, and uh, you know, how much the system cost and how much more cheaply it could have been done for. And uh, with the SABC, with the, the, uh, the perception, uh, and some of it is completely justified, uh, regarding the, the the SABC as a state mouthpiece rather than a public broadcaster, 
um, uh, but the, the 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 damage there, most of the damage there, I would argue, was done in the Tladimir Tsuneng years, and yeah. and it's going to take years to fix that damage. Okay, so so now we've got the problem statement. Now, what the SABC is doing is a couple of things. Firstly, they're firing people. And okay. so they've got a retrenchment process going on, and the, the that's naturally not going over well with the unions. This now is the that's problem obviously that I... cost cutting initiatives, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So okay. they've got a lot of cost cutting happening. Uh, it, like starting with with staff. Uh, problem with the SOEs is that they're always going to run into the unions. The the unions are threatening to cause a blackout of the yeah. SABC entirely. Now that doesn't just affect TV. That affects radio as well. Yes. So um, even if you are not a South African living in a rural area who is completely dependent on radio for your information, uh, even if you're just a, even if you're a South African in an urban area who has the privilege of driving yourself to work every day, um, a lot radio. of the radio stations people listen to are SABC radio stations, right? Got so, um, so the blackout will, will probably affect that as well. Um, anyway, uh, already getting sidetracked here, but to try and paint a picture of what the SABC is doing: cost cutting, starting with staff, also looking at their uh, carriage fees. So the SABC to broadcast its signal uses another state-owned company called Centec. Yes. Uh, and the SABC is going, you know what, Centec, we cannot afford your fees anymore. So it's cheaper for us is the, the message that they are putting out there to go over satellite than to keep using Centec, mm. um, uh, in, especially in rural areas. And so we are going to start scaling back on how much of Centec we rely on. And uh, that's bad news for Centec and the jobs at Centec. But um, uh, that gives you the idea of what they're doing in terms of cost cutting. And then in terms of getting their revenue up, that's where this TV license story comes in. And, uh, and uh, you know, where they uh, want to, to get pay TV services effectively. Um, there was talk of this before the days of Netflix. There was already talk of, of this with multi-choice and DSTV is getting DSTV to do this. And mm -hmm. now uh, with the advent of streaming, they want the streaming providers. Uh, you, you, you know, usually when you talk about streaming providers, the name Netflix comes up, but they're not the only one. Netflix, Showmax, Amazon Prime Video, Apple TV Plus. There's a horde of them out there. Um, but uh, the, the SABC want uh, these uh, companies to basically help recover their TV license fee. Um, it, you can think of it as VAT, right? Uh, this, it, will, it, it works on exactly the same principle, is whatever thing you buy, whether online or offline, um, the law says that VAT needs to be collected and that VAT needs to be paid over to government. And, and that will be the same thing here. Think just when you think you struck a deal with MWeb with an uncapped 20 meg fiber, now you've got to pay <laughs> fees. <laughs> you know, yeah, there goes yeah. my gaming crew. <laughs> Shame, man. <laughs> you know, now the other thing I want to ask, um, you know, okay, we've now discussed engagement of the SABC. What about ICASA? Obviously, they are regulatory body, etc. Um, will they obviously follow through with this, with the SABC? Um, how how would this now be mediated moving forward? And do you think there's enough substance for the SABC to use this? Are they going to like maybe um, uh, block some content service platforms or something? How would this be initiated? Um, so it, it wouldn't be a, a matter yes. of. Uh, getting uh, the you know some of the other content platforms blocked it would be so this would be quite a lengthy process of passing laws mm -hmm. to to substantiate the change in regulation um, so it'll be a it will be many a many years long process uh, to do this and then the likes of Netflix and Amazon and such will have no choice but to comply but um, as I've as I've raised uh, in public before, an immediate basic logistical challenge presents itself um, that you know hasn't really been covered in these suggestions. Is uh, what happens to those of us who subscribe to multiple services, um, or you know ha have bought a normal TV and thus have a normal TV license? Um, now are you, you going to be double and triple taxed? 
You know, are you going to be paying a portion of a TV license for your Netflix subscription and on your Amazon subscription and on yeah. your Showmax subscription and on your DVS, DSTV subscription? So there's going to now all of a sudden they 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 need to build mechanisms into each of these platforms so that you can say, no, listen, I've got a TV license. Give me a discount or something like that. Um, I think you so, touched on an interesting point logistically, because let's say you've got an LCD 2010 model TV, which isn't a smart TV, but you're paying a TV license for that. You are subscribing to Netflix services. You're getting content because maybe you love sports, so you've got DSTV or whatever the case is. Now you've got three. Uh, <laughs> where do you draw the line? I think that's definitely one aspect they need to really cover. This is going to yeah. take a long time, Jan, definitely, as you said. Yes, yeah, this is not not something that that can just be changed overnight. And um, uh, to encourage people who are listening to the show right now, th mm. the, this this suggestion, uh, this proposal, um, is in draft right now. You have until I think the end of November or mid November. I think it's uh, to be safe. Let's say ten November to respond to this thing. Um, and so and now is the time to make your voice heard. Uh, and and uh, all the details are, are on the government websites. Uh, there's, e there's email addresses that you can contact, and then you let them know what you what you think about this policy uh, that government wants to enact. Now, uh, what about sports rights? Um, uh, this is an interesting talking point because mm -hmm. the SABC have called for improved access, right, uh, to national sports rights. Specifically, it wants access to bro these broadcast rights at an improved rate, etc. They are arguing that national sports must be made available uh, at a very affordable price. But now they want to charge you to have access to content you're already paying for. So they're going well, in a circle. Legally I mean, in fairness, um, you know what's happening now is, is there's a high level of civil disobedience in South Africa. Let's not let's not mince words, right? Whether <laughs> it's just whether it's justified or not is an entirely yeah. different discussion. Uh, it's a little yeah. bit outside my wheelhouse, um, but uh, the the fact is that South Africans are not paying their TV licenses even though they're supposed to. Like, even if you just have a radio in your car, to the best of my knowledge. You should actually have a TV license, right? And so the idea here isn't to double. That's the sense I'm getting. The idea here isn't to double and triple dip. It's to it's to recover the TV licenses that is by law actually owing to the SABC. So so that's the first thing to your question. The second thing to your question is yes, the sports rights issue is a is is a hot button topic. Um, that's uh, I would say is actually quite separate from the TV license discussion, um, but it's sort of all part of the bigger broadcasting discussion. Um, and yeah, already we're seeing uh, the I think the South African Rugby Union um, standing with multi choice against policies to make um, these uh, key national key sporting events um, available. Uh, you know, for, for on free to air on SABC, um, you know, because it has a financial impact on them. Uh, these leagues mm. and these teams are heavily dependent on um, the income from multi-choice for broad, for, for broadcasting rights for, for part of their income. Um, the, the PSL, which wasn't on the list, I want to make that clear. Uh, the PSL yes. has, has made it a hundred percent clear that they are almost are uh, totally dependent on uh, multi-choice uh, to pay their players. Um, but uh, the, the, the policy being proposed from government does not cover the PSL. It covers sporting events of national importance. So they're talking about things like the Olympic Games. They're talking about uh, games involving our national teams. Um, mm. And you know, so it, it won't include things like motorsport and and so on. It might even not include uh, things like tennis, where we've got a South African in the Wimbledon final, right? Um, yeah. We're talking we're talking about uh, national teams that have received national colours, like the Springboks, like Bafana Bafana, um, who uh, represent the country in international sporting events. Uh, the the one exception to my national colours thing. Is um, the the rugby uh, um, the, like the Super 15? Well, we're not playing in the Super 15 anymore. Where we're doing the Northern uh, Hemisphere League now, but uh, where we've got teams that still represent South Africa, even if it's sort of more a regional team, um, yeah. it's still a a team that represents 
uh, South Africa, or at least a portion of South Africa that's going into an international competition. So that what's the, that's what that policy is about, and it's um, part of making those sporting events more accessible. Because right now, if you're a rugby lover and you want to watch those games, you need to pay. You need to be on DSTV's most expensive package, over nine hundred rand a month to watch that stuff, right? On and premium, so yeah. There's a there's a there's an interesting discussion to be had here, but um, the the there's there's two sides to the story. There's the side of the ordinary viewer who cannot afford that subscription, and you know can't be hanging out in a bar <laughs> um, uh, whenever <laughs> these games are on to to watch the game, um, and the fact that even though you might not be a rugby lover. This is something that helps with social cohesion in South Africa. When when Bafana Bafana play and they play well, uh, this whole country is happier. And it's the same with the rugby and it's the same with the cricket. When we lose, different yeah. story. Um, uh, so yeah, it's an, it's an interesting topic that's that's got more. It's it's uh, there's more to it than just the simple issue of sports rights and the, the price of, of uh, broadcasting rights and the money that that generates for the teams and the leagues. Um, you know, there's, there's uh, the, the whole of South Africa um, to, to think about here as well, which I think is what this policy is driving at. The question and the reason we're discussing is, is how realistic is it? Um, right. You know, it's one thing if government says, we will su the, the money that you will lose from not having DSTV cough up for exclusive rights, we will subsidize the difference okay. right through tax money. But that's not what's being talked about here is the government is trying to meddle in commercial markets without offering commercial solutions. And I think that's what's uh, causing problems here. Now, in conclusion, yeah, you've touched on a number of points how to change the dynamic you mentioned civil obedience a number of times in our conversation and yes people are you know just not interested they're just not you know playing their part how do you think now the, the government the sabc the minister is sitting what are they going to sit down and do to try and make people come back to the fore and say okay look i need to do what's right you know? Yeah, yeah. And there are deep problems. I mean, beside, like uh, the SABC right now is dealing with very similar problems that, you know, the likes of ESCOM and SAA uh, is dealing with. Facing, it's not yeah. it's not as bad at the, at the SABC, but they've got revenue, basic revenue problems. Now, when you've got yeah. that, that's like the overriding issue that you've got to deal with. But the problem is that that's intertwined with the fact that you need to provide a service that that people feel willing to contribute to. And so that means news. If you're going to be a public broadcaster, you need to provide news and commentary that's that's balanced, that doesn't favor um, the, the ruling party, and where people don't get in trouble for criticizing the ruling party. Now, that doesn't mean, obviously, that the SABC needs to be just another mouthpiece to slate the ruling party, but fair fair commentary and and uh and opinions. in line with the bcc sa basically that's what exactly and and you can say that i think that the the, the anc has failed its constituents by not providing basic housing education and sanitation and that shouldn't get me fired from the sabc right like as long as i can okay. back my comment and my yeah. opinion up with facts um, then that shouldn't affect my career at the SABC. Um, so, so that's that's the, the the one aspect that that government needs to deal with. But that's that's a that's a, a how do you fix a reputation, right? Fixing a, a damaged reputation takes years of yes. consistent effort of delivering consistently with integrity um, when your integrity has been undermined. And so, this is not a, not going to be a simple issue uh, to fix and. By trying to, I, I fear, and unfortunately, um, you know, the government finds themselves, in, you know, in a difficult position here, a catch-22, a rock and a hard place, whatever you want to call it, mm. where fixing the problem um, and by trying to force people to pay uh, their TV licenses might make them more rebellious. I and think so, so. Uh, we're, we're in a situation in South Africa where people feel overtaxed. They're already overburdened, um, and uh, on top of that, they feel failed by the government. And so now uh, to, to, to go, okay, we are now going to invade uh, spaces where government has no business. Um, 
I mean, you're already levying that on top of everything we buy. And now on top of that, you're going to start taxing stuff even more. Like, you know, you already the government is taxing the petrol we put in our cars, the tires, you know, the petrol and tires we put in our cars. They, mm. They're taking a tax on the, on the electronic devices we buy in the shops. Um, so, you know, uh, the, the 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 real danger is that South Africans will will eventually reach a breaking point and go. You know what? Enough is enough. I've had quite enough of anything. I'm not paying any more tax. The government can go jump. <laughs> and I think you know many people are going to feel that way soon. We want your interaction with us as well, Jan. That's where we leave it tonight. And there's so much you've touched on, so much to talk about. But uh, yeah, as you say, interestingly, uh, it's going to take sometimes so do not panic just yet guys it yeah. might not just happen you know on might not happen at all yes. yeah well hey i mean maybe or maybe not but i mean it's not going to happen where payday comes in like okay i've got a budget to allocate another 50 odd bucks yes. uh, for my license jan from Marlon, thank you so much for your time and awesome having you with us once again have a great my weekend pleasure. until you we too. chat again man take care keep well bye-bye you too man bye-bye that's uh jan from Marlin, senior journalist at uh, my broadband um yeah so guys we were talking about netflix and uh, dstv and the sabc's proposal for the regulation to be passed where you now have to pay for your uh pay content services and you have to pay a license to access this right um what are your thoughts comment below and you can also comment on the whatsapp line on zero double six uh sorry zero six one seven double six zero three double five it's now 25 minutes after eight time for a quick ad break when we come back i speak to adam ford who is a motoring journalist and that's in the car talk segment we're talking buying cars on auction versus buying a used car the do's and don'ts and uh, he'll be talking to us from a dealership perspective and selling as an individual stay tuned and keep it locked to Salah media Water is life. Donate to the Islamic Relief Water for Life campaign and give essential water aid to those in need. For just 750 Rand, you'll be able to provide life-saving access to clean and safe water. That can transform communities, prevent diseases, bring relief. Together, we can make clean water this a is reality. A paid give water, give life. Donate to Islamic Relief www.islamic-relief.org.za What makes Randery Jewelers the optimum place for your memorable gift? Is it our range of exclusive, high-end, luxurious jewellery? Or is it our master craftsmanship of all your bespoke jewellery needs? We believe it's because at Randery Jewelers, we know just how to make your special moments last forever. Whether it's for a wedding, anniversary, or just a simple gift to show your love, Trust Randery Jewelers to make it special. www.randeryjewelers.com Make your moments last forever with Randery Jewelers, the family name you can trust. This is a paid-for advert by Al Jamar, calling on the community of Lanesia to vote for Al Jamar on the upcoming by-elections. The Al Jamar party will be represented by their candidate Imran Musa, who intends contesting Ward 9 for the November 11th by-elections. Visit our website aljamar.co.za for more information. Ooh, ooh. 